Well, thanks very much. I'm uh, happy to be here. I'll be uh, speaking on a topic that uh, if your tumor boards are anything like mine, uh, this is a, a case situation that, that often uh, requires some thoughtful consideration, and that's because there are several options to consider. I would highlight that I, I certainly uh, cannot uh, in good faith argue that every patient with stage 3A disease should have surgery. I wouldn't want to do that, and I think most of the surgeons even would not favor that. The question is whether stage 3A N2 disease uh, is an appropriate consideration for a subset of them, and I think the evidence would suggest uh, yes. The real issue is that stage three disease is extremely heterogeneous. There are people with a single nodal station involved uh, and not clinically enlarged uh, nodes. There's people with multi-station bulky disease. And the, the outcomes are remarkably different for these patients. This is an over 700 patient retrospective uh, uh, look at uh, uh, patients in France. And you can see that in patients with microscopic, that is, you know, not, not uh, uh, pathologically enlarged single station nodal involvement, uh, even for patients, uh, some of these patients got adjuvant therapy, some did not, but the long-term outcomes are in the range of uh, a third of patients uh, going on uh, for, for five years or, or so. And uh, the outcomes are far less favorable in patients with multi-station or pathologically enlarged nodes. So it's really uh, a mistake to, to put all of these people into the same category and treat them the same. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, in Europe, patients routinely do, uh, even with stage 3A disease, uh, get uh, primary surgery, and uh, the ANITA trial, which was one of the more influential trials that has led to the standard of care being uh, cisplatin-based doublet for uh, up to four cycles after uh, after resection, uh, included patients with stage 3A disease who didn't get upfront treatment. And in, uh, this is the general population. You see a, a clear benefit uh, that is uh, important and that uh, stage 3A disease patients, certainly uh, the outcomes were, uh, were reasonable and uh, quite encouraging, particularly for those who did get chemotherapy. It's not a crime against humanity necessarily to give the chemo that you would be often routinely giving up front afterwards, and for patients who are incidentally found at surgery to have a microscopically positive node and you're already there, it's, it's certainly reasonable to proceed with the resection and follow up with chemotherapy. There's no real reason to think that three cycles given uh, a month after surgery is substantially different from giving those same three or four cycles uh, preoperatively. Uh, there has been a study looking at uh, chemo versus chemo radiation prior to surgery. This is a, uh, a European study in which uh, the presumption was that all of the patients with stage 3 disease, and this included 3A and 3B disease, who were possibly resectable at some point, would go on to receive surgery. And this work showed that downstaging was extremely important. So for the patients who went from N2 or N3 disease down to N0 or N1, if you cleared the mediastinum, you uh, tended to have uh, good outcomes with survival here five years out uh, exceeding 20%. And uh, that's, that's really quite good under any circumstance of, of treatment. Uh, again, for patients who are downstaged and R0, uh, the patients uh, Patients did well uh, with, with either arm, potentially. Uh, in the US, the standard has been, for about 20 years, uh, neoadjuvant therapy of some sort. And that's really based on a small, uh, a couple of small trials. One was done in uh, Spain. They're talking about 60 patients uh, and the three-year survival, 23% for preoperative chemo versus surgery and for uh, a, a, a a report done just out of, uh, uh, at the same time from MD Anderson, another 60 patient trial also showing a striking difference uh, favoring preoperative chemotherapy versus uh, surgery. And so even though we're talking about 120 patients in total, the fact that these trials both came out same time, two different continents with strikingly superior results for uh, preoperative therapy led to that being a standard of care, not necessarily the standard of care. Uh, SWOG at that time uh, began 
uh, efforts that were looking at uh, chemo and radiation, and in fact, this trial uh, also included patients with 3A and 3B disease, so uh, even more generous in the potential resectability than uh, than we would routinely pursue. And patients went on to get cisplatin, etoposide, and concurrent radiation to uh, an induction dose of uh, 45 gray, went on to surgery if they did not have progression. And as we saw in the European Thomas trial, striking differences in outcomes depending on whether patients uh, had clearance of their mediastinal disease by the time of surgery based on their induction therapy. So a threefold higher five-year survival, 33% is, is a great outcome for stage 3A and 3B disease. There was actually no difference in outcomes depending on whether you started out as 3A or 3B. The real difference was how well you did and the stage of your cancer at the time of surgery. So uh, the question was whether the induction chemo and radiation were doing the, the heavy lifting here and the, the surgery was maybe adding nothing more than morbidity. Uh, there was another trial that uh, looked at nodal clearance. Uh, this, was, uh, this was a European study by Bedeker and colleagues out of Scandinavia that gave all the patients preoperative cisplatin and docetaxel for three cycles. And uh, they found the median survival of 28 months was excellent and a striking difference in outcomes depending on whether you had mediastinal clearance or not. And in fact, as shown in, in the uh, in the two curves, the, the differences in whether you had mediastinal clearance based on induction or not was comparable to the difference in whether you had a complete resection or not. So uh, certainly in, in all of these settings, stage 3A patients were considered to be appropriate candidates for surgery, and some of these patients enjoyed an excellent outcome afterwards. There was a, a good study done, uh, at least uh, it, it left us with some murky results, but it, uh, it attempted to address this direct question of whether surgery should be pursued over chemo and radiation, an intergroup study led by Kathy Albane. And uh, this gave cisplatin and etoposide with concurrent RT uh, to all of the patients with 3A disease. And then some patients went on to surgery after stopping the radiation at 45 gray. Others received uh, radiation up to a more definitive dose of 61 gray, and then uh, ideally all patients would go on to get uh, two additional cycles of cisplatin and etoposide after either surgery or the uh, completion of the radiation. Overall, the trends were in favor of the surgery arm in progression-free survival, but overall survival was not difference be different between the two arms, and there was actually uh, a, a crossover at around the, the, the mid-median, where initially the patients on the surgery arm tended to do a little worse. Uh, there were some uh, challenges with getting through the surgery, and then uh, later on, beyond the median, patients who had gone through surgery tended to do better, but that kind of crossover is not going to lead to any significant differences by a hazard ratio. Um, here you can see the progression-free survival median marginally, modestly favoring uh, the surgery arm. Five-year survival actually better for the surgery arm, but with that crossover, uh, as you can see. and. Uh, Again, in this study, as we'd seen in so many others, nodal downstaging is a critical component. And for the 38% of patients who achieved nodal sterilization, the long-term survival exceeded 40%. And that's, that's excellent. This is, these are the kind of numbers we've been talking about for earlier stage patients. And so for those who are uh, feasible candidates without very bulky disease, those patients who responded uh, well to the initial therapy tended to, to do extremely well with surgery. The uh, intergroup study uh, did a subset analysis. This was a post hoc analysis. And in patients who underwent a lobectomy, if it was feasible to do a lobectomy, the patients who underwent surgery did uh, significantly better. Actually, this was not a statistical analysis because uh, of uh, the various caveats, but uh, strikingly better uh, if they had surgery uh, and received a lobectomy. And the opposite was true in the patients 
who uh, had or, fe or were felt to require a pneumonectomy uh, in whom chemo and radiation appeared to be uh, a superior option. And so I think the, the appropriate point is that not everybody should be getting surgery, and those with bulky disease or very uh, medial disease that, that would require a pneumonectomy are probably far better served with radiation. That, that's an area of uh, the lung, you know, the more medial it is, the less lung needs to be radiated, but the more extensive the surgery may need to be. But I think it's a mistake uh, to throw out the baby with the bathwater and, and uh, say that categorically patients with stage 3A disease don't benefit or, or shouldn't receive surgery. So uh, adjuvant chemotherapy uh, does uh, provide a benefit that is uh, the greater the, the risk of recurrence, the greater the benefit of adjuvant therapy, but uh, it's probably comparable to neoadjuvant. So certainly for patients who end up in the operating room and are incidentally found to have nodal disease, it's fine to proceed with that and then pursue adjuvant therapy as you otherwise would. And in a subset of patients who are downstaged, uh, mediastinal clearance and R0, neoadjuvant therapy has uh, looked at least comparable and generally uh, favorable compared with uh, chemo radiation. It may possibly uh, be that this downstaging is just uh, an indicator for a subset of patients who do particularly well uh, regardless of the intervention, but the post hoc analysis does address that, and even with its imperfections, really suggests that for the patients who uh, respond well to the preoperative therapy and at that point are candidates for a lobectomy, they seem to do extremely well and perhaps uh, significantly better than those who receive chemo and radiation alone. So there are caveats, but I think the key point is that there is a lot of heterogeneity in what uh, falls under the broad category of stage 3A and 2 disease. And for a subset of those who don't have bulky disease, uh, and ideally with a single station, uh, uh, surgery, an approach of induction chemo or chemo radiation followed by planned surgery is at least comparable and, if anything, has data to suggest superiority in this subset of patients. Uh, there are no data out there to say that chemo and radiation is superior to surgery in this group of patients. So thanks very much. Thanks, Jack. Excellent. Uh,